I think the main issue is the idea of interdependencies in dealing with problems of the world economy. For example, then on the biggest challenge that the G20 faces on exchange rates and current account balances, it's the idea that on the one hand, clearly China and the US are the key actors, both the problem and the solution in dealing with the issue of currency and imbalances. But at the same time, it's those two being able to work with the other key economies of the world. You know, this is where we're in a very interdependent world now. And so the idea is how to get all of the various countries to basically work in some coordinated fashion where they're not creating negative spillover effects from the actions that they take individually, right? As well as to avoid certain countries free riding on the system. And so I think that this is the idea of collective action. It's very difficult to, get, to actually get individual nations to think about the greater good. But I think this is what the importance of the G20 is to try to get that message across about the system. I think it's a good question. That's the million dollar question. Right? And this is where we're in Asia where safe phase, face saving is very important. Right? And I think what we have going for us is that on the big issue of currency and imbalances, China and the US know that the Korean hosts have worked really hard on this summit. Right? More than a year of preparation, really working the diplomatic front. And so I think there's a desire on the part of all the players here to try to help ensure the success of this summit. And that means being able, be, being able to deliver some tangible results. I think we're, what we're going to see on the seven or eight areas that this summit is dealing with, we're going to see progress, for example, on the work of financial re-regulation in IMF reforms to deal with voting shares. Probably in global development, there will be important agreement reached on principles. Uh, Anti-corruption. Right? We can expect this is the newest face of the G20 now. Right? Coming into Korea, the new face of the G20 was global development. But now the next phase, the next phase of the G20, anti-corruption. I think we're going to see progress in all these areas. But then to come back to this issue of the imbalances in the currency, will we see tangible results there? And I, I think this is more difficult. It's easier to get them to agree in principle on matters. And then the question is going to be whether they leave it to APEC, Yokohama, in a few days to deal with the details.